Okay, so we've got the iBook done. Um, I've shown you just about every feature there is to show you. I mean, just remember that you've got lots of colors and font choices. Um, you name it. You're now ready to preview it, see what it looks like on the actual iPad. So what you want to do, you actually have to be connected in order to do that. And what you're going to want to do is uh, plug your iPad into your computer with the attached cord. Let's see. Okay. And once your iPad is connected, you can click preview. Okay. It's gonna it's going to look for an iPad connected to your computer. And when it recognizes your iPad, your iPad will show up in this device list. So you just heard the, the noise. There it is, there's my iPad. And now I can click preview as soon as it's done. So So connecting an iPad, okay. Now depending on the size of your book, it might take a while for this preview button to become active. So I'm going to pause the recording to let that happen. Um, so it's preparing the preview and apparently what I needed to do and I'll show you, I'll go back and show you, was instead of just click on him and click uh, whatever the button was, just double click on the name of your iPad and then it, it starts to actually prepare the preview. And this is what the iBooks bookstore looks like. So once again, I'm just going to pause the video uh, one more time while that's loading. Okay, so iBooks open. It says uh, update, updating preview document. So it's going through and it's actually uploading the proof copy to your iPad so that you can actually preview the book on your iPad. And when this is done, I'll come back and I'll flip through the book and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here we have it. Um, I'm a famous iBook author now. So we've got the Media and Politics um, app in the proof. So there's the title, and you can see on the big screen the actual, what it really looks like. And when I click on it, so I'm going to click on the app. It opens up, and the introductory video plays. Now this is just a clip I took from a, from a documentary. Um, Okay, that's just a clip I took from the documentary, but that really should have been me talking about the course and the goals and an introductory video. But that's the introductory video that introduces people to the book. The next page is going to be the uh, introduction. And as you can see, sorry, the table of contents. As you can see, you can, uh, you can change these. Uh, you can't change this. You have to change it here. You can actually change that right there if you want to but I'm not going to. So we get the uh, introduction and people can can go through the chapters in the table of contents and they can click anywhere they want to click um, to see you know to see the film or to see any chapter they want to see. So and then when they flip the page oops, sorry they have to click on a section so now we see the the goals and assumption we see the the new template I created the photos um, again, another photo. You got the photo gallery, and you can just flick that photo gallery open, and you can swipe through the photos in the photo gallery, and you can pinch it shut again. All right. Another page. We've got the great video that shows up. You can watch the small video, or if you want to see it larger, again, you just expand. Fast forward. Process that seems to be continuing, but if it done. Now, once again, students don't need the internet to access this. Okay, the 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 student can go home with the with the iPad. They don't need the internet. They can access all of this on their iPad. Okay, we'll flip through another video example. Iran was getting a little richer right. from oil, but still had short life. And keep flipping. We've got our um, 
website here with some links, some active links that'll open up if there is internet to a Safari browser. And uh, we're going to go back to that book now. And then again, another link, another photo, but this time it's just a single photo, so it doesn't open up. If you add it as a photo gallery, it'll open up larger. But this one doesn't open up. Um, we've got another video. Again, flip to make it larger. Thousands of New Guineans. Great resolution, depending on the resolution you download from the web. Now we're getting to the keynote. So you can actually click on the keynote presentation and you can go through the keynote by just clicking on the actual keynote. Or once again, you can expand and you can click on the keynote um, as such. So that's the keynote presentation. And then shrink again. Uh, you've got your quiz, and if this stuff is all just loaded up there. It's, I just wanted to show you the widgets, but you can take the quiz, check the answer. Yes, I got it right. Clear the answer. Ooh, try again. Okay. The the podcast the in the AAC format, not MP3. The podcast you can listen to. Of course, you can put a photo there for people to look at as they're watching that. Um, the interactive, which goes large, and you can learn more about this section of the map. Okay, you can zoom around it, learn more about that. Okay, an interactive map. And uh, my all time favorite, the DAE models. So you can look at a medieval home in full 3D. So that's what we just created tonight, the iBook. Um, you can click and hold um, and somewhere on the page, somewhere towards the top or towards the top and get back to your library. Um, maybe a double click sometimes, uh, but you can go right back. So that's the iBook. Now Welcome back. So uh, after I finished the iBook last night, I spent quite a, quite a while trying to figure out different ways of sharing the iBook with students. Um, quite honestly, you know, sharing it through, you can share it through iTunes. You can even sell it on iTunes. And if you've got a fully, you know, polished product, you may want to consider that. But I think 90% of the, the sharing that goes on with teachers is going to go through a different means. And the reason for that is because sharing through iTunes is a pretty complicated process. Um, you actually have to go through a bookseller if you want to sell it. And uh, even making the free books available, I have yet to figure out where to find those. I'm also concerned about copyright issues. Um, if you make a book available on iTunes for the public to, to download for free and it contains some copyrighted material, you might be in trouble. So the, the, the way I'm recommending uh, the sharing of books is um, privately. So the one way that I explored was actually, which is actually pretty interesting, was uh, Dropbox. And it worked very well. I'm actually going to open... Um, iBooks author again, and I'm just going to open a template and save it quickly. So I'm going to, uh, so this is the book, and I'm just, just modified, so you know that I actually modified this one. And I'm going to share it. Uh, I'm going to actually export it as an iBook, and I'll give it modified, so it'll be called modified, and then export to my desktop. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this iBooks book called modified.ibooks and I'm going to drag it into uh, my media and politics Dropbox folder. So Dropbox is a, is a free tool um, uh, for saving material up into the, in, into the cloud. Okay, and uh, so there's modified iBooks and then what I can actually do is install the Dropbox app <clears throat> on the iPad and go to my Dropbox folder and there's the modified iBook. I can click on that. And it will open up a sort of script, but then I can click, you know, open with uh, iBooks. And this seemed to work. So again, once this is active, I can click iBooks, open in iBooks, and the new book will be here. Okay. 
And you can tell it's my book by this modified. Okay, so that's one way, and I thought that was going to be the, 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 the brilliant way, the beautiful way of sharing it with Dropbox. Unfortunately, whenever you create, a, a, you know, try to put any sort of video in or any sort of uh, other media or the book gets too large, it, it starts to not work. Um, it'll just sit there, load and load and load, and then all of a sudden Dropbox will fail. And I tried multiple other ways of getting books online, and it seems like uh, up to about 30 megabytes, they're fine, but beyond that, it doesn't work. The book that I created was about 442 megabytes because I had a lot of videos. So the only way to do that is by actually connecting it um, to your iTunes account. And what you're going to do is you're going to open iTunes if it doesn't open automatically with your uh, when you plug in your iPad. You're going to go to books and you're going to make sure that this your book is in there. Um, if you don't see books, once again, you want to make sure you click on iTunes preferences and make sure that you've got the books icon checked. Okay, So you should, should see books. And then all you need to do is drag that book into your iTunes. Okay, So this Media and Politics is the one that I created. Okay, You're going to drag that in, and it's copying one of one. So it'll take a few minutes to, to actually make that change. And then once you're in, and then what you can do is go back to your iPad, iPad Go to books, and then you can choose to sync all books or selected books. So I'm just going to do selected books, and you'll see, you'll notice that the books are not in here yet, the new one, because it's copying media and politics right now. So I'm just going to give that one more second and see how long that takes. Yeah, there it is. So media and politics, and then I'm just going to click sync, and I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to iBooks, <clears throat> go to the library, okay, and we're going to wait. Now we notice that there's the medium politics, but that's proof. It says proof. That was the sample preview. This one here in media politics is downloading right now. You can see the little download bar. And you can see that even though it's 440 megabytes, it downloads pretty quickly through iTunes. So what you can do, if you want to share this with students, is what I would recommend is put that iBook on a flash drive, okay, 440 megabytes. You, it can have, you can have a relatively large book. Tell them to go home, um, you know, drag the iBook onto their computer, um, onto their desktop or somewhere on their computer, and then drag it into iTunes, and then sync their iPad up. Um, with that new iBook, and that's all it takes. Um, so Dropbox kind of works. Maybe it'll work better in the future, and that would be a way of, of sharing your book with, with many, many people, making it open and available to the public. Um, but really, the, the best way, the quickest way, is to just do it this way. And you can see it's all downloaded, um, and all of the media was preserved, everything, including you know, our videos. Quick and easy. All right, so there you go. Um, how to create an iBook, um, how to use Handbrake to convert, how to use QuickTime to get it to the M4V file, how to download podcast um, in an AAC format. You know, creating iBooks, you know, everybody says it's easy. And, and if you look on the web, there's lots of tutorials that make it look real simple and easy. But when you get down to it, there's a lot of little areas to be aware of. So I hope you uh, you appreciate the, the length of the, the tutorial. Um, and I certainly hope that uh, you, know, you, you learn from it and you're able to start creating some pretty amazing iBooks for you and your students. Good luck.